in. Oh, George, we've got company. This is Bill Goodwin speaking for Swan, the new white floating soap that's pure as fine cast steel. Well, it's Tuesday night again, time for another pleasant visit with George Burns and Gracie Allen, with Felix Mills in the orchestra, and our guest tonight, Lawrence Tibbet. And now, meet the people who live in the Burns house, George and Gracie. Well, tomorrow is election day, and we find George in Stanley's cigar store making last-minute plans to win that coveted public office, second assistant substitute city councilman from the 3rd District. Well, Stanley, these last two boxes of Perfecto Royale cigars may turn the trick. I'm passing them out to every man who has a vote. Yes, Mr. Burns. It's darn nice of you to give me a special rate because I bought so many of them. Oh, that's all right. At four for a nickel, I still make a profit. <laughs> Uh, Top-notch smoke. Have one, Mr. Perkins? Uh, no, thanks. My doctor advised me to stay away from tobacco, but not that far away. <laughs> okay, have your little joke. Oh, hello, George. I thought I'd find you here. Oh, hello, sweetheart. Good morning, Mrs. Burns. Hello, Stanley. You're not selling my husband more of those cigars, are you? Uh, don't blame me. Hmm. I'm getting these for the voters. You know, to pass out. Well, they certainly will if they smoke those. <laughs> Darling, uh, I don't believe you know Mr. Perkins. This is the real estate man, Mr. Grafton Brookhouse Perkins. Oh, how do you do? Oh, how do you do, Mr. Perkins? Well, gentlemen, wait till you hear the clever thing I just did. I put an ad in the newspaper calling George's opponent, Gordon Case, a moron. But you can't do that. He'll sue us. Oh, I was too smart to mention his name. The ad says, do you want a moron for your councilman? Vote for George Burns. <laughs> Fine, I'm ruined. Oh, say that the uh, political commentator's on the air right now. If you folks would like, I'll tune him in. Oh, swell. Then we'll see what he thinks of the election tomorrow. And all indications point to a clean sweep for Henry Garton in the second district. Now, over in the third district, where George Burns opposes Gordon Case, it looks like a real fight. Gee. With everyone fighting to vote for Gordon Case. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> and now, political notes from here and there. Last week, the state of Louisiana turned the governor's chair over to Jimmy Davis, whose successful campaign, you remember, featured the singing of Mr. Davis. Music in politics seems to be an important new trend. Oh, Stanley, and quick, turn that off. Me if, uh, why, uh, what's wrong, Mr. Burns? Oh, George, you can croon your way into office just like that governor did. You think so? Well, of course, darling. Oh, here we've been knocking ourselves out, and all the time you've had the election right between your tonsils. <laughs> I'd love to call you Rose, dear, but roses fade away. Oh, no. What do you mean, oh, no? In Louisiana, that man singing got him the governor's chair, didn't it? Yes, but... Oh, uh... why, George may even get to be governor. It wouldn't surprise me if his singing gets him the chair. <laughs> well, come on home, Gracie. I've got a lot of practicing to do. Uh, uh, but I'd wait a minute. love to call you Rose. Oh, murder. I'm in for it now. Why, Miss Perkins? Well, I'm the agent for the house next door to Burns, and for months I haven't been able to rent it because of his singing. Well? Well, he's been quiet lately, and just yesterday I managed to rent the house to Lawrence Tibbet. Lawrence Tibbet? Yes. Oh, George's singing will drive him crazy. Say, I'd better telephone him. Oh, yes. Mr. Tibbet might get mad and throw George right out of the neighborhood. <laughs> yes, he might. <laughs> Never mind the telephone. <laughs> I'd love to call you Rose, dear, but roses fade away. Louder, dear, louder. Those vocal cords haven't been used lately. They're a little dusty. Roses die when winter time appears. Uh, what was that? Oh, our new next door neighbor knocking on his window. He's the noisiest man. His little son runs away, and all day long he stands at the window yelling for him Figaro, Figaro, Figaro! <laughs> They must be Spanish. Yeah. <laughs> I'd love to call you Daisy. But... What was that? Oh, uh, the man next door again. Flies must be bad over there. <laughs> Closing all his windows. Hmm. Hope they don't come over here. 
I'd love to call you Daisy, but Daisy's always there. But we are. George, what are you doing? Vocalizing, Bill. I need something to loosen up my throat. Well, here's a knife. <laughs> Bill, George is going to win the election tomorrow with his singing. Oh, no. I don't get it. Well, we'll get all the voters in the Hollywood Bowl tonight. George will sing for them, and tomorrow they'll vote for him. Well, Gracie, even if that had worked, it's no good because Lawrence Tibbet is using Hollywood Bowl tonight. Lawrence Tibbet? What office is he running for? <laughs> well, he's not running for any office. He's giving a concert. Hey, that's bad. All the music lovers will be there listening to Tibbet. I won't have anybody to sing to. Well, there's only one thing to do. We'll find Lawrence Tibbet and ask him to turn his concert over to George. Oh, Gracie, that's impossible. Why, I bet if George walked out on that stage and started singing, the people couldn't tell him from Lawrence Tibbet. Oh, they could, too. They could not. They could, too. Tibbet has a mustache. <laughs> well, now I've heard everything. And if I call you, Buttercup... <laughs> Hey, Gracie, why don't you tell the people if they vote for George, you'll help them get one of those wonderful full-color baby pictures you're sending out. Oh, there are no political strings attached to getting those pictures, Bill. All the folks have to do is send me a dime to cover the cost of handling and mailing, and then I'll send them one. Gee, it's a cute picture, Gracie. Oh, yes, it shows a whole boatload of happy little red-cheeked babies sailing along, having the time of their lives. It makes you feel good just to see them. Yeah, it's a big picture, too. Twelve by fifteen inches. Printed in full color on such heavy art paper, you don't even need a frame. And there's no advertising on it, Bill. That's right, Grace. And all the folks have to do to get one is to send a dime to Gracie Allen, Box 84, New York 8. New York. That's Gracie Allen, Box 84, New York 8, New York. Now, please, everybody, send for your swan picture with all those cute babies in it. Now, before they're all gone, send me your dime tonight. You don't miss this year's swan baby picture. That address is Gracie Allen, Box 84, New York 8, New York. Gracie thinks that George can get himself elected councilman if he can just sing in Hollywood Bowl tonight in place of Lawrence Tibbet. Gracie is trying to get in touch with Tibbet, not realizing that he is their new next-door neighbor. Oh, let me see now. Where would I be if I were Lawrence Tibbet? <laughs> oh, I know, at Nelson Eddy's house. If you were Tibbet, you'd be at Nelson Eddy's? Sure, throwing rocks through the windows. <laughs> Gracie, I'd give up this idea if I were you. Oh, don't be silly. If I could just think where Lawrence Tibbet might be. Pigo! 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 Hey! Pigo! Oh, he hasn't found that kid yet. <laughs> hey! Keep quiet over there. I'm trying to think. Let me see. Where would Lawrence Tibbet be? Mama, now he's lost his daughter. Hey, wait a minute. That's a great voice. Did you hear that E flat? Oh, that's nothing. George's E's are much flatter. <laughs> oh, let's see now. Oh, maybe if I call the Hollywood Bowl, I could find Mr. Tibbet. Maybe, Mama, 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 Mama. Now, even his mother's run out of him. Listen, I don't know who that guy is, but he's got a wonderful voice. Oh, Bill, it's only good if you don't hear George sing. Can I tell you something, Gracie? It's only great if you don't hear George sing. Oh, Bill, I'm glad you agree. Oh, sweet mystery of life at last I found you. Show him up, George. I'd love to call you Rose Deer. Oh, I'd love to call you Rose Deer. Oh, I'd love to call you Rose Deer. Oh, oh. Not. <laughs> well, <laughs> that did it, 
George. Oh, little lungs gave up. <laughs> well, I better go out and look for Lawrence Tibbet. Bill, what does Mr. Tibbet look like? Lawrence Tibbet? Well, he's a big, handsome, barrel-chested baritone. Oh, George is tight. <laughs> George, George is tight, huh? George isn't that tight, Grace. He is, too, on a smaller scale, of course. <laughs> He may not have a barrel chest, but he's got a cute little keg tummy. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll see you folks later. Bye. Oh, Bill, on your way out, will you see who's at the door? Oh, sure, Gracie. I want to talk to you. Why, Lawrence Tibbet. Now, look here, my good man. I don't want to be a fussy neighbor, but you've got to stop beating that dog over here. Dog? Yes, his howling is driving me crazy. Oh, you, you must mean Mr. Burns singing. Now, don't tell me those sounds came from a human throat. Well, uh, yes, you see... Uh, hey, wait a minute. Are you living in the house next door? Yes, yeah, you can call it living. <laughs> oh, this is rich. Gracie doesn't know that you're Lawrence Tibbet. Wait till she finds out. Well, who was it, Bill? Oh, it's the leather lung. <laughs> uh, yes, Gracie, the man next door. He's mad about George's voice. Oh, he is? Very mad. <laughs> I'll see you later. Um, did you want to see my husband? Yeah, Definitely. You see, I'm trying to get in shape to give a concert. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. My husband wouldn't have time to give you lessons. <laughs> uh, lessons? Uh, yes, he's too busy. You see, he's taking Lawrence Tibbetts' place in the Hollywood Bowl tonight. Oh, well, 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 well. This is very interesting. Tell me more. Oh, are you a fan of Mr. Tibbetts? Mm, yes, yes. I have been for years. Oh, <laughs> You know him. Yeah, intimately. In fact, I shave Mr. Tibbet every morning. Oh. oh, you're a barber. And you want to give up barbering and start singing, huh? Well, uh, let's hear your voice. Uh, my voice? Yes, uh, sing something. On the road to Mandalay. Where... Well? Well, I hope you didn't sell your shop. <laughs> I beg your pardon, I... Uh, uh, let's see you hit an A. A. Now hit a C. C. Now hit a J. A J? A, what? Oh, too high, huh? <laughs> Say, Gracie, I thought I heard you... Oh, it's old Leatherlung. Oh, yes, George. He wants you to give him singing lessons. No, really, well, I... I haven't got a lot of time, son. <laughs> But at least I can check up on your voice and see if you got anything. No, no, don't be nervous. Just open your mouth wide and let me hear you sing. Oh, she could carry a gun good as any mother's but son. I'd, uh... Let me hear you sing. Oh, she could carry a gun good as any mother's son. Oh, she no, could no, no, carry no. a gun. No, no, no. Oh, she could carry a gun good as any mother's son. Oh, she no, could no, no. carry no, a gun. No, no. <laughs> For... Oh. No, no. For... Carry a gun, get as any mother's son. Oh, she can no, carry... no, no, no. <laughs> well, George, George, I, I think, I think that's enough for the first lesson. Well, okay, you can relax, son. A few sessions like that, and you'll be able to get those pear-shaped tones, just like I do. Yes, and after tonight's concert, they'll probably put George's vocal cords in the cement at Roman's Chinese, don't you think so? <laughs> yeah, they'll probably sound better there. Uh, <laughs> well, see here, Mr., uh... What's your name? Uh, Tibbet. Lawrence Tibbet. Now, see here, Mr. Tibbet, if the... <laughs> huh? You're Lawrence Tibbet? That's right. Gracie. Uh, well, well, we certainly fooled you, didn't we, Mr. Tibbet? <laughs> <laughs> you thought we didn't know who you were. Ha, <laughs> 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 You see, I, I like my little joke. Yeah, obviously, you married him. Huh? 
Well, uh, now, if you don't mind, I'm going home now and rehearse for my concert tonight. Oh, rehearse here, Mr. Tibbet. We want to talk to you about your concert anyway. No, I don't think I'd better. Oh, but we'd love to hear you sing. No, thanks. Oh, well, then, you sit down and George will sing for you. Oh, I'll sing. I'll sing. <laughs> oh, oh, George, isn't this thrilling? Grand opera right in our own living room. No, this won't be opera, though. It's, it's a favorite of mine from musical comedy. Cold Porter's Night and Day. Thank you, thank you. I, I think. Yes, sir, that's a nice little voice you've got there, Larry. In fact, you got me worried. I'm going in and vocalize a little. Oh. Um, Mr. Tibbet, my husband can get elected councilman tomorrow if you just let him take over your concert tonight. Oh, I'm, I'm afraid that's impossible. Uh, the people expect to hear me sing things like, uh, like common. Well, George can do that. Oh, which common do you sing, like Lombardo or Miranda? <laughs> oh, just just forget it, Mrs. Burns. Well, I guess George will just have to get the voters over here and sing for them this afternoon. Oh, oh no, please, not that. I, I have to concentrate, and that house next door is the only vacancy in Los Angeles. Well, it can't be helped, Mr. Tibbet. Now, look, if I give your husband a part in my concert tonight, will you promise to keep him quiet this afternoon? Oh, gladly. All right. 
Now have him backstage at the bowl at quarter to eight. Uh, goodbye. Oh, goodbye and thank you, Mr. Tibbet. And don't worry about George's voice. He's a regular nightingale. Uh, you think so? Oh, yes. When he sings in Hollywood bowls at night, you really hear the birds. <laughs> I'm, I'm afraid so. <laughs> well, here I am, Larry, all ready to sing. Will uh, George have much to sing, Mr. Tippett? Oh, yes, he sings every other number. Gee. Now, here's the program. First, uh, you sing the aria, O tu cane seno agli angeli, from La Forza del Destino by Giuseppe Verdi. Uh, that's my first number. Yeah, that's, that's right. I'm afraid I don't know that one. Well, uh, well, I'll sing that one for you. Oh. Now, uh, now your next number is a stirring thing. Viva il vino spumeggiante from Cavalleria Rusticana by Pietro Mascagni. That's my second number. Yes. And this, of course, you do very fortissimo. Viva voce, etc., etc., etc. Oh. Well, that's the only way George would do it. I'm afraid I don't know that one either. Then I'll sing that one for you, too. Now, uh, now comes our duet. Oh, now we do something together. Yes, yes, we'll do two numbers. Uh, Say in mio nome. And Ecco Ridenti in Cielo from Il Barbieri di Seviglia by Giacchino Antonio Rossini. You don't happen to know Struck Miss Lizzie. <laughs> or, or Tata Tootsie Goodbye? <laughs> no. Strutter's Ball? No. No. Well, Mr. Tibbet, if the whole program is going to be those classical songs, George won't get to sing at all. <laughs> uh, too bad, but I tried. <laughs> you know, I went through the program, but I just couldn't work anything out. Well, I thought you worked George out very well. <laughs> well, Larry, while you're out there singing, couldn't you just ask the folks to vote for me? My dear fellow, uh, George Burns, running for councilman, could hardly fit with Carmen and Faust and Rigoletto. Oh, I guess it couldn't. Or could it? I I beg your pardon? Oh, nothing, nothing. Just an idea. Uh, uh, You go on the stage, Mr. Tibbet, and and I'll bring your music out to you. Uh, But why you? Well, um, um, I'd like to look it over so I'll know what to say when I introduce your numbers. But I thought the narrator was uh, Bill Goodwin. Well, I'm taking his place. Oh, I see. Well, well, hurry now. The concert begins in just a few minutes. Yes. Lovers, welcome to Hollywood Bowl. It is my pleasure to present Mr. Lawrence Tibbet, who will sing the famous Toreador song from the opera Carmen. Oh, you'd better read off this music, Mr. Tibbet. It's a special arrangement. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Lawrence Tibbet. <laughs> Second assistant substitute city councilman from the... Hey, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Stop that music. Stop it, stop it. Uh, Mrs. Burns, I, I can't sing this. Oh, what's the matter, wrong key? Uh, <laughs> Mr. Tibbet, I'm, I'm sorry I let Gracie narrate for me and cause all this confusion. Here's another arrangement. Sing this one. Well, this doesn't have anything about George Burns in it, does it? Oh, no, sir, not a word. All right. Let's take it again, Mr. Mills. Wash with swan soap, that's what it's for. Hey, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute, stop. All right. Mr. Tibbet, what's the matter? 
Well, what is this swan soap? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Mr. Tibbet, that's the new white floating soap that's four soaps in one. The soap for your hands and face, bathing the baby, or for dishes and light laundry. Four swell soaps in one, a great wartime buy. But the Hollywood Bowl's no place for swan soap. Oh, swan's great in a bowl. <laughs> or a pan, and it's especially wonderful in a tub if you're bathing a baby. You see, swan's pure as fine castile. And swan is so mild and gentle, it's just perfect for a baby's tender skin. And naturally, if it's a soap for baby, well, swan must be just right for your hands and face, your tub or shower. Uh, Mr. Mills, will you play that selection from Rigoletto, and this time I'll sing from memory, and no more special arrangements. Bella figliore l'amore Swan breaks in two Put half in the bathroom for your hands and face and half in the kitchen for dishes and light laundry. Hey, stop it's the that best music. Stop, world. stop that it's music. It. Stop that music. Ladies and gentlemen, there will be a slight delay in the quartet from Rigoletto while I take care of the trio from the third district. <laughs> Are you asleep? No. Oh, I'm sorry. I got you into such a mess tonight. Fine thing. I'll never be elected now. Getting thrown out of Hollywood Bowl in front of 50,000 people. I'm sorry. Wind up tomorrow with two votes. That's all I'll get. Your vote and my vote. Oh. <laughs> Just your vote, dear. I'm voting for Gordon Tate. <laughs> what? Well, as long as you haven't got a chance anyway, and he has got a lot of sex appeal. Good night, dear. Good night. <laughs> Folks, I just want to tell you this. Gracie was really on the level about that baby picture we spoke of. If you want to get a swell, full-color picture of a lot of babies just as happy and full of fun as can be, here's your chance. This picture is by a famous artist, and it's printed on very heavy art paper. You can frame it or tack it up just the way it is. Perfect size, too, 12 by 15 inches. To get your picture, just send a dime to cover the cost of mailing and handling to Gracie Allen, Box 84, New York City 8. That's Gracie Allen, Box 84, New York 8. Better do it now before you forget. Here they are again, George and Gracie. We're a little late, folks. Good night. A new white floating soap. Join George and Gracie in inviting you to tune in to your Columbia station next Tuesday, same time, when we'll have as our guest, Georgie Jessup. Remember the same time every Monday and Wednesday when you'll hear two other great programs, Lux Radio Theater and Frank Sinatra, both the same time in the evening and over the same station as Swan Soap's George Burns and Gracie Allen. Tune in every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday at this time. Remember George Burns and Gracie Allen, CBS next Tuesday night. Till next Tuesday, this is Bill Goodwin saying, Well, I, Swan, how about you? When a soldier goes into battle, he needs ammunition. When a soldier's wounded in battle, he needs medicine. You can help provide both by saving used kitchen fat. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.